In this episode of The Conscious Entrepreneur, we dive deep with Rob Dubay, who's a highly successful entrepreneur and co-author of a brand new book on developing inner resistance called Shine. Now, if you followed Conscious Entrepreneur for a while now, you may also know that Rob was a speaker at the inaugural Conscious Entrepreneur Summit in Denver in 2022, so that's why his name sounds familiar. Now, in this new book, Shine, How Looking Inward is the Key to Unlocking True Entrepreneurial Freedom, which was co-authored by Gino Wickman, Rob explores a transformative approach to being an entrepreneur. This book is not just another business manual. It's really about the psyche of the entrepreneur. So it guides you through a journey of self-discovery and introspection. Our conversation today unpacks the essence of shine, focusing on the power of inner work and how it can lead to true entrepreneurial freedom. Rob shares the 10 disciplines for managing and maximizing your energy, which is a theme that has really influenced his work and life. We also talk about the three discoveries that frame the book and practical steps that you can take to implement these concepts in your daily life. This episode is a great listen for any ambitious entrepreneur who wants to grow their business without sacrificing their well-being. So join us as we explore how to be driven yet at peace, make decisions from a place of love rather than fear, and embrace the journey to uncovering your true entrepreneurial self. Rob Dubay, thanks so much for joining us on the Conscious Entrepreneur Podcast. It's an absolute pleasure. It's great to see you again, and I'm so grateful that we're able to reconnect in this way. Thanks. I mean, you were one of the speakers at the inaugural Conscious Entrepreneur Summit in Denver in May of 2022, where you talked about some of the stuff that has really taken a very big role in your life. You talked about the 10 disciplines for managing and maximizing your energy, and that was the theme of your talk back then. And I know that has really uh, guided you over the past several years in terms of in terms of your work. So I'd yeah. love to just do a quick introduction and sort of set the stage and then uh, and then jump in. And so sure. for for folks who uh, don't know you, Rob, you're the co-founder and visionary of the ten disciplines for maximizing your energy. Yes, and that's right. such a great it's such a great theme. It's such a great uh, initiative. And on top of that. You are recently the co-author of a new book with Gino Wickman, which I have right here, which is Shine, How Looking Inward is the Key to Unlocking True Entrepreneurial Freedom. And that draws on the 10 disciplines as well. Uh, you, of course, have also, uh, you have very serious entrepreneurial chops in <laughs> building your own business and running that for 25 or 30 plus years, uh, some very long period of time. You are also someone who has written a another book called Do Nothing. Uh, you are a mindfulness proponent, a retreat leader, uh, a meditation teacher. And so in my view, someone who really is combining everything around conscious entrepreneurship. Uh, and so Rob, just to kick off, how do all these pieces fit together for you? What is the defining narrative of all these things that you have been working on over the course of your career? Oh, my God. I have no idea other than to say, isn't it funny, but not really, how things just come together in life when you allow yourself to let go and follow what's, what's it coming from the inside. And so, you know, I think back at the early days when I started my first company out of college, Image One, which you referred to um, earlier in terms of the company that was now 33 years old mm -hmm. and uh, just having a whole different mindset around what it meant to be uh, an entrepreneur, what it meant to grow a business and all the misconceptions that I had very early on. And I'm, I'm happy that people like you these days are helping bring to light a whole new way of thinking about how you can go about business, especially in entrepreneurship. I've heard you refer to entrepreneurship as 10 years of hell. <laughs> uh, I mean, and this coming from someone who knows what they're, what they're talking about. Um, what was the entrepreneurial journey like for you? What were the highs and lows? 
And I'm particularly interested in your shift into mindfulness and how that came about and how you started to rely on meditation in particular as a tool. Yeah. So early on, there's a, there's a, a event that always sticks out in my mind. It was a YPO event and there was a speaker that had come in and uh, we were at round tables and they asked us to do an exercise uh, and share with each other. And I remember, I don't really actually remember the exercise, but I remember a moment of interaction with one of the people there. And that person uh, was explaining to the group at the table how he treated his employees. And he was very edgy with them. He was very... Um, uh, strong, opinionated, and he felt he needed to come from a place of power with them to show, you know, who was boss, so to speak. And I remember thinking to myself at that moment, I don't know that I'm cut out for this, actually. I started to really doubt myself because I started to believe based on his outside success that that's what I needed to be. In fact, I started to try to model it for a very short period of time. And it just, wasn't in alignment with who I was. So it created a great deal of doubt for me over a number of years. And so, you know, I, that's one of the things that pops into my mind. And then mindfulness, you know, early in my life, I uh, experienced a great deal of uh, trauma and abuse. And mm -hmm. when I got into my um, uh, early 20s and I started the business with my best friend, I got married early on, we had kids. And I just felt anxious all the time. And I was edgy and irritated and, you know, all the things that just didn't feel right about life, unhappy, depressed, <laughs> OCD, oh gosh. go on and on. And uh, so I was just searching for different ways to different tools. Uh, therapy became really useful for me early in my mid-20s. And later, uh, I found meditation. I was very skeptical about it, but I gave it a try, and I found it to be really useful uh, in my life. And I've had a, a very a serious uh, meditation practice for well over 20 years now. And as you mentioned, I host a, a meditation retreat for leaders um, out in your neck of the woods in Colorado once per year in the fall. So, um, yes, I found it to be useful for me, and that's really helped me as a leader, I believe, um, be a better person with our team. It's, it's one of these things these days that many people are talking about meditation, mindfulness, doing things to help, you know, moderate the ups and downs of the entrepreneurial journey, so to speak. Um, but so many people are doing it. Everyone's coming at it from a different direction or a different, <laughs> or a different angle. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions out there about what to do and, and how to do it right. What are the common misconceptions that you see with entrepreneurs who say, hey, I want to get started here, or maybe they misunderstand the benefits or, or what it takes or, or how to do it? How, you know, what, what, what are some of those common misconceptions that you see that would be helpful for Well, the for first one is that it will be a benefit. That's the first misconception. It might not be actually. <laughs> so just know that going in. The second one is, um, you know, like anything, just not sticking with it, uh, looking for a really quick uh, fix, so to speak, a silver bullet, the thing that's going to calm you down and give you peace. Um, it doesn't, meditation really isn't that, although it has that component. And I mean, I tried to hold back. I don't want to go down too much of a rabbit hole there. But what I would say instead to an entrepreneur who is looking for some type of peace, uh, and I imagine we all have that in common, is maybe just find 30 minutes a day to be still and uh, do what feels best to you. And it could be one thing or it could be a combination of things. Maybe you meditate for three minutes and you journal for three minutes and you contemplate for three minutes and you're out close to 10 or something like that. But just settle yourself down. Um, you know, and I, I, I said 30 minutes because ultimately I'd love to see us, you know, as a humanity, quite frankly, be able to just stop. We're so busy. It's crazy out there. <laughs> just get ourselves to just slow down and, and let our minds settle and our bodies settle. And they're connected, as you know, Alex. So, you know, when, when your mind settles and your body settle, you know, you're able to, uh, show up in the world, maybe just a little bit better, 10% better, 20% better, whatever, you know, it all makes a difference. 
I mean, we, we all have so much going on. And for an entrepreneur, it's, you know, five times, 10 times more than for the average person, right? So much going on, physical activity, mental activity, mental chatter, uh, emotions. Uh, and I, and I know from, uh, from talking to you previously and, and other, uh, kind of other, uh, podcasts that you've been on that you say that doing nothing is one of the hardest things that we can do. And, and that's, that has been, at least in the past, some of your call to founders is basically just chill out, unplug, turn it all off, do nothing and see, see how far you can get. Definitely. I mean, a couple of things come to mind. First, one of my favorite quotes that I share all the time from Anne Lamont, the best-selling author. She said, my mind is like a bad neighborhood. I try to never go there alone. I see your head shaking. <laughs> you must have heard that. So, you know, I always say to people, you know, maybe uh, if you are open to cons considering this idea, maybe subconsciously, that is why it's so difficult for you to sit and be still for 30 minutes because you know exactly what's about to happen. You know, your mind's about to go nuts and you don't want to sit there with it. It's too darn painful. And, uh, but it's in my experience and many others, the journey's worth it because there's a certain point where you become the observer to your thoughts. And when you begin to observe your thoughts, you start to see your patterns. And when you see your patterns, I'm laughing because it's funny. You see your patterns, it's funny, it's frustrating, it's irritating, it's, you know, it, it's all the emotions and, and then some. And, and so then you can start to bring your awareness back to the present moment because that's all you really have. And I know all this when people hear it makes complete sense. You, I, oh, yes, of course, of course. Yes, the present moment. I know, I get it. I can't control the future. I can't change the past. I get it, I get it. But somehow sitting, by yourself for 30 minutes is just so challenging, even though intellectually you understand it all. And so, um, yeah, so that's why I say it's, it's the most challenging thing that you can do. You know, I even think about uh, taking time off. You know, it's something that we talk a lot about at the 10 Disciplines. And, you know, we encourage entrepreneurs, leaders to take at least 130 days off and not think about work the entire time. And they have a really hard time with that. And we're saying like weekends count. That's 104. And, you know, like holidays and vacation. I mean, you're close to 130 without even doing anything special, but they can't turn it off. You know, they need to check their email. They need to have read the next business book or catch up on industry news, call into the office, whatever it is. It's like we're drawn to that dopamine hit. And, you know, what we really want to encourage and what we teach is really how to turn it off and get comfortable with it and really embrace it as you begin, as your awareness begins to expand to the beauty of everything in front of you at the present moment. I have, I, I can concur that uh, meditating <laughs> is one of these things where you think, oh, yeah, 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 sure, that makes sense. Uh, I did my first meditation program in 2005 here in Boulder, Colorado. Uh, and I did a, a lot of different ones since then. Uh, I did a Vipassana seven day silent retreat about two years ago. And that was way up there with the hardest things I've ever done in my life. Uh, so this is over a week silence, no, no books, no distractions, no reading, no writing, no talking, uh, you know, not a lot of eating or sleeping either. Essentially, it's a lot of meditating and, and stillness and reflection. And, uh, it's, it's hard to think about it as doing this for anything other than just doing it. Meaning I always want some reward at the end. Oh, I'm going to do this and get some kind of magic reward. In reality, I'm just there and I'm just doing it. So I can, I can testify to that. It is hard. It can be valuable. Sometimes it is valuable. Sometimes it's just another part of the day where I'm witnessing myself and observing myself. And that is the reward. I just don't think we realize that. <laughs> yeah, <quite. laughs> but it truly is. Yeah. Now let's let's shift here and and I want to talk about your your new uh, work. So you co-authored this book Shine uh, which is really about uh, a different way to look at entrepreneurship. And it's it's written uh with Gino Wickman. Gino is uh, obviously famous for building EOS, the entrepreneurial operating system. He wrote the book Traction. And, you know, it strikes me that 
uh, I would have previously thought of, of Gino Wickman as someone, you know, this is systems and process and building <laughs> and, you know, like with a, with that sort of mindset, if you will. And so it was really interesting to see the work that you were and he were able to co-create together, which is very different. You're talking about uh, the true self. You're talking about finding your intuition. You're talking about how to navigate through the journey of being an entrepreneur. And of course, you're dropping a lot of tools and um, tips and ideas along the way. But I was really struck at the breadth of uh, the psychology piece and the inward looking piece. I mean, you reference Michael Singer and the Untethered Soul. You reference David Hawkins. You reference uh, Bessel, Bessel van der Kolk and <laughs> The Body Keeps the Score. So there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, I guess I would say at the margins for a lot of people. Yeah. For me, it's like dead center square, you know, on target. I think about this stuff all the time. Um, but my question is for an entrepreneur who may be, you know, not as far down this path or not as into self introspection or inquiry or mindfulness or what have you, what's your message to them to get them to rethink and to reframe and to pick up a book like Shine? and really open the door of possibility there. Yeah. Well, you know, I think the first thing is to take a step back and observe your life. Um, we have an assessment that you can take. You can go to our website and it's a free assessment. We encourage you to take it every 90 days because there's 20 questions and they shine light in areas of your life that just simply light needs to be shined on. We all have areas that we need to focus on at different times in our life during this journey. And as an entrepreneur in particular, there are so many things in our journey that I would say are actually quite unique in the way that we live our lives. We have a lot of balls in the air. I mean, you talk about just the regular everyday person and they have a lot of balls in the air. But as an entrepreneur, you know, we write that you're making like, 10 times more decisions in a day than a regular person. And a lot of times they're significant decisions that you need mm -hmm. to make. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so you wonder, why do I go home and have a hard time being present with my family? Why do I have a hard time, like we were speaking before, about just being still for 30 minutes? Why can't I turn it off? Why does my body always feel like it's vibrating? <laughs> I can't sleep, <laughs> you know? And so, you know, what we would ask the reader to consider is the idea that when you're able to uh, put in place the proper foundation in your life and start to understand the things that really matter most and why you're doing what you're doing, you will experience greater peace. But we don't want to take that driven part of you away. We want you to still be successful, and we believe you'll be more successful, quite frankly, and that's not just a sales pitch. I truly believe you will be more successful be because you will be aligned with what your true self wants you to do in this world. Mm -hmm. And on the, on the outside, that's scary to some people. I actually think that scares them away from us because they're not ready to take off the suit of armor or come out of that shell because it's going to disrupt everything they ever learned in their life about mm -hmm. what it means to truly be successful. And so it can be scary to do that. And many say, I'm just, I've had people say to me, I'm just not ready to go there. <laughs> yeah. I, it does, it does take courage to go down this path. So first, I mean, personally, I'm 100% on the bus with you guys. Right? I know this. you so, are. <laughs> I'm I'm totally totally aligned, but it can be scary because maybe you're questioning why am I doing this? What's the purpose of you know me being an, an entrepreneur? Why did I sign up for this journey? What do I actually want out of life? Um, and then that a lot of stuff can come up. Uh, and the cool thing about this this book, and I think you know influenced by you, is uh, it's a it's really a guide for us. It's really a guide for us now. What did you draw on? Where did you go find your influences to come up with this? And in a second, I want to get into the three discoveries and the 10 disciplines that are covered in the book. But, you know, where did, where did you get the spark from to, to create this type of manual? Yeah. Well, you know, I think first I just draw on my own experience, but in, to, 
in the present moment, not knowing that I was leading to this. You know, I, I, as I mentioned earlier, I just having to do my own personal work and then noticing how it was showing up at the company that I ran for many years. And then noticing about seven years ago that through self-awareness that I wasn't really qualified, nor did I have the energy to take the company to another level. So I had to make a decision about what that meant. And, and then there's, you know, all kinds of things that we as entrepreneurs w- uh, may or may not resonate with you or others. It's like, well, what's my identity? You mm-hmm. know, I mean, mm-hmm. I, I thought I was all about this company. <laughs> like, this was my life. Now what? What am I supposed to do? Like, how can I live with that? And so that there was a lot of those questions that I was kind of uh, uh, working through. And, and I always like to share this story. And I, I know that you'll know this person. Some, I'm sure many of the listeners will as well. But uh, John Cabot Zinn, uh, who brought mindfulness-based stress reduction uh, to the world, really, it's an amazing program. Um, and, and he was somebody early on that, that I became uh, you know, very drawn to his, what he was writing about and teaching. Um, and I had the great honor to interview interview him for my podcast uh, years back. And uh, I was very geared up for it. I did a lot of preparation. And at the end of the interview, when we stopped recording, I was like, ah. and I was like, thank you very much. I really appreciate you. You know, you're so great. I'll let you go now. I know you're busy. And he said, hold on a second. Hold on. I want to hear about you. Tell me about you. And the first thing that came out of my mind was, well, I'm CEO of this company and yada, yada. And I went into this whole thing about my company and he stopped me in my tracks. And he said, I don't care about your company or anything having to do about that. I want to know who are you? And I I just, I get chills telling the story because it was such a wake up call for me about how I identified myself in this world. And so, you know, I share that story because that, these were some of the things that I was going through. And then when I was able to let go and, and, and having that mindfulness and meditation practice and doing retreats like you mentioned that you did, which I do very regularly, were very useful to help me uh, let go of mm-hmm. all of that and not be so, um, you know, tied in to that and what it meant and my success or lack of success and all that kind of stuff. So I said to my business partner at the time, we need somebody to replace me, but I don't want to recruit for the person. My intuition, I was following my true self. I wanted this person to show up and I wanted to believe that we could do it in that way. And the only way to do that was to really be my true self, to know that this person would would show up in our lives at the right time. And of course, it's got a happy ending because he did. And But it took three years of just being patient and keeping my awareness high and then bringing the person in, being um, patient, and then finally completing the succession plan uh, a few years back. And of course, he's much more capable of running Image One than I ever was. And Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I I think, you know, following your true self is something as entrepreneurs, we we don't get taught that. And I get it, (laughs) but that's what we want to teach. And that's why we have the process and created a process kind of to do that. And we also, by the way, our identities get completely mixed up and interwoven with our companies. And (laughs) that is such a thing for entrepreneurs just to ask yourself the question, who would I be without my company? Just like John Kabat-Zinn said to you. Exactly. Exactly. Now, uh, Shine starts with, uh, uh, so you've got, within, within the book, you've got the 10 disciplines for ma- managing and, ma- and maximizing your energy. Uh, and those are, those are very concrete. They're very specific. And uh, that's exactly what you had spoken about before when you came to Denver for the Conscious Entrepreneur Summit. So I was you know, pretty familiar with, with those and, and, and how they went. And there's a lot of value to those. Um, and they're very practical, tactical types of things. So sort of decisions I could be making. And I want to get into those uh, with you here in, a, in just a minute. Uh, but before that, the, the book itself then changes and it opens with what you call three discoveries. Yeah. And these seem to me to be the framing for the rest of the book, meaning 
you know, if you agree with these three things, these discoveries, then we can talk about how to implement it and how to, you know, kind of get on with all the things that you need to do and, and manage your life and maximize your energy. Um, but I hadn't heard those come up before. Tell us about those discoveries, what they mean, how you came to articulate them in this way. Yeah. So first, let me just provide context because I'm going to just talk about the disciplines, not specifically, but what they mean and what they are. They're a framework. They're a foundation is what they are. Mm -hmm. They open up space in your mind and time in your life so you can start to be more, uh, bring awareness to this idea of the, the three discoveries, which are the first one is I am driven. Okay. So once you have the foundation in place, you know, these basics, like you mentioned, and when we put them together, they're very strong. They help you understand yourself. And once you understand yourself and you're really clear about that, you protect yourself. There's boundaries that you have to put in your in place so you can make a greater impact in the world. Mm -hmm. Vibrating at a high, when we say maximize your energy, we're talking about vibrating high every single day. That's what we mean by that. So now you say, okay, I've got this in my life. Now what? Well, first we want you to understand that you're driven. Okay, yeah, I'm driven. Duh, thank you. Uh, I never heard anyone say it to me that way, but okay, cool. I get it for sure. So what does that mean? Well, we drew on some different, uh, our own experiences and a wonderful book by Dr. Doug Brackman, amply named Driven. You know, and he has a lot of great stuff in there about what it means to be driven. You know, he says it's about 10% of the overall population. So if you look at eight, eight, eight billion, eight and a half billion human beings, you know, let's call it 800 million driven. And there's all kinds of professions. They're not all entrepreneurs, but mm -hmm. I just want to say to your listening audience who are entrepreneurs, you're in a very small category in this world. Okay. And as such, it might seem like you're kind of nutty sometimes in your own head and that people don't get you except for your peers. That's why as entrepreneurs, we love these peer groups. We love coming to the Conscious Entrepreneur Group uh, Summit and being part of that group because everyone gets us in there. Right. No one else in life gets us. And we go out with our friends. They don't get it. You know, right. We yeah, feel totally. crazy. Mm -hmm. you know? And so it's like it's a blessing and it's a curse. It's a blessing because we are idea machines and we know how to go out and make stuff happen. I remember talking to you when you were birthing the Conscious Entrepreneur Summit. And I thought to myself, this guy has a, I, I remember getting off the Zoom or we were on video, whatever it yeah. was. And I remember thinking, oh my God, this guy is taking this idea and he is birthing it. It's going to be real. Like he yeah. is not messing around. I knew you were a driven entrepreneur from that moment because that's what driven entrepreneurs do. You don't say to somebody, I'm going to create a summit. <laughs> you know, the door, hey, why don't you go create a summit and like get people to come and pay and, you know, have a whole community. Right? It just, most people go, what are you talking about? That's impossible. Right. <laughs> why bother? They say, they, or they say, why bother? Why would I do that? Why bother? Yeah. yeah. And then in the resilience, when you just keep getting knocked down over and over again, the resilience we have, it's unbelievable. Nothing stops us. Nothing gets in our way except for a momentarily blip where we doubt ourselves and then we just get right back up. So it's a superpower. You know, we make better widgets. We create new kinds of widgets, new kinds of services. This is what you do. You change the world. And I, I don't mean that lightly. I, you really do. Okay, so great. But there's a curse. <laughs> and the curse is you leave a black trail behind you often because these people can't keep up with you and it irritates you. It's your family members who 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 don't understand why you're not present meaning when you're with them, you're somewhere else. It's your team members, your employees who who feel your irritation when when you're trying to describe your big vision and they don't get it or they're just in the moment trying to get their stuff done and you're like 10 steps ahead of them and they go home and they're frustrated. So you leave a black trail, as I mentioned, behind you. And it's just important to bring awareness to that. Like, where it, where is this a blessing? I need to focus on that, but I need to be really aware of where I can mess things up. And mm. so, um, you know, another thing that we share in the book, and, and you, you might remember, is a friend of ours, Justin 
Breen, who works with entrepreneurs, he, he said he, he never met an entrepreneur who hadn't experienced one of these four things. And then Gino and I added a fifth. Um, and so I'll, I'll read his fourth and then our fifth. His were bankruptcy or potential bankruptcy, heightened levels of anxiety, uh, depression or traumatic experiences as a child or young adult. And then we added an addiction. And right. so, you know, a lot of times when we talk to entrepreneurs, their heads are shaking. They go, oh, yeah, three of those, two of those, five, all five, you know, something like that. So there's another component to our driven nature is that we've had these experiences. You know, like for me, I had traumatic experiences, as I mentioned at the outset. So what did I want to do? I wanted to control my life. How could I control my life in business? You know, I could go get a job. I can't control that. So I decided being an entrepreneur was the way I was going to control things, even though I've now later found out I can't control anything. <laughs> you know? But you think you can because you're self-employed. You know? <laughs> I'm going to make my own way, you know, except for customers, you know, they have something to say about it and employees do too, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, it's important to know that you're driven. So that was the first discovery. <laughs> So discovery number one, I'm driven and yeah. I'm driven is, is sort of a calling for entrepreneurs. It's a, it's a flag that we're planting that says right. you're a small percentage of the population. You're not alone. You're not crazy. We call it driven and it's got pluses and minuses, but that, that's sort of like kind of laying, like putting the sticker on the wall to say, this is, this is who we are. This is where we're going. That's You got it. You got it. Okay. Bring awareness. And then we move you to discovery number two, which is there's decisions are made out of love or fear. Now, for us, we use those words. So love is heart, fear is ego. I always like to say ego is not bad. We have all kinds of different egos. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm sure many of your listeners, uh, they're, they're conscious people, so they get it. Um, but I, what we really want you to encourage, what we really want to encourage you to do is find the words that resonate with you best. But just go with me on this because we're saying your decisions are being made out of love or fear. So take a step back. Actually, do this as a practice for a day or two. Because you're making 10 times more decisions than other people, jot down every time you have to make a decision, not like what you're going to have for lunch, but like, you know, should we hire this person? Should we open in a new uh, market? You know, should we can't, uh, should we, um, you know, go after this customer or not go after them or prospect or not go after them, et cetera, et cetera. So, and then stop and pause and just say, Where's this decision coming from? Is it coming from my true self? You know, does it really serve everything that serves me in the company as a whole? Or is it coming from fear? Like if we don't open in that market, you know, we won't be able to keep up with the other companies in our industry, you know, but you have no interest in having other markets. It adds complexity right. and you don't want to have three offices and have to travel around. You don't want that life for yourself or your employees, but you're scared. You think you're going to fail because of it. You know, so these are the kinds of things we want you to pause and do that in your personal life too. And it's pretty funny when you stop and do it actually, and you notice again that that uh, that ability to be, bring awareness to to your mind and the way you're doing things. It can be quite humorous when you start to notice where you're coming from. But ultimately, when your decisions are love based, when they're from your heart, from your true self, they align more with where you're going in this life. So again, if you mm -hmm. can just move the needle 10, 20, 30%, that's epic proportions for you. Uh, it was, it was, uh, I found it really striking to read those, the way you frame that the decisions are made from love or fear. I keep a printout of David Hawkins map of consciousness in my office, uh, which shows the energetic frequencies and the vibrations all yeah. the way from, from shame and up. And uh, so to me, that really resonated. Another way that I think about this sometimes myself it, when I'm making decisions is uh, instead of love and fear, I, I do it as uh, abundance or scarcity. So am I, okay. am I doing it? You know, scarcity would mean I'm afraid or something's not going to work out and I'm defensive and I'm thinking in a much narrower frame of mind versus abundance would be 
it's a big universe out there. There's a lot of things provided. It's a benevolent place. Something will work out. I always work things out, you know, that sort of thing, a more expansive type of mood. So to me, it was really interesting to see your framing on that. How's the response been? Is this something that, you know, entrepreneurs are like nodding their heads? Like they're like, yeah, I get it. Or do we have to explain this concept? I, the, 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 the high level decisions are made out of love or fear. I see bobbleheads every time I say it. It yep. resonates. It hit home hard. So now it's a question of like what you're doing uh, with abundance or scarcity and really, you know, tuning into that practice of pausing. You know, we we go fast. We want to make decisions fast. You know, we, we got to keep it moving. We got to keep the momentum, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I'm not suggesting you slow down necessarily, but you might have to at, at the beginning to truly, you know, uh, go inside. And really ask mm -hmm. myself, is this, a, is this an abundant decision or is this a scarcity decision? In our case, is it a love or fear based decision? You know, and some of it requires us to, you know, um, unblock some things that are going on inside, you mm -hmm. know, and we talk a little bit about that. We don't need to get too deep into that, but sometimes there are things inside of us that are holding us back and we just simply need to release them. So we can get to our true selves and make the abundant decision versus the scarcity decision. Well, let, let's talk about that for a second. So, you know, in, in, in a high paced entrepreneurial environment, you've got a lot going on. There's, there's a lot of pressures. It's easy to default to the quick decision, which might be being made by the amygdala, might be being made in some other your part of brain that, that's saying, you know, hey, fear is my driver here or scarcity is my driver here. You know, I just need to get going reframing that to look at it more expansively to look at a bigger picture can have tremendous benefits but as you're saying i may be being held back by things i'm not even aware of or not consciously aware of um what are your tips how to to, to get started here how do i start to pay attention to where these decisions are coming from what roadblocks might occur what friction points might occur if i want to do this well, the, the high level, simple thing to do is to have one place where you're capturing everything that's going on throughout the day, including, you know, just general business stuff, notes, to do's, action items, things like that. But start to notice in a meeting, let's say you need, you're, you're about to make a decision or maybe you made one and just jot down what the decision was. And at the end of the day, just go back through your notes and reread the decision that you were po you, that you had to make or that you ended up making and just pause for a minute and contemplate whether where that came from. Did it come from love or did it come from fear? You know, we uh, have a, a deeper dive into it, four levels that we talk about. Again, mm -hmm. I, I'll only follow your lead on that. But, you know, that's like a very high level way that you could do it. It's really simple entry point. And I truly believe it's worth doing. It might feel uncomfortable at first because you're not used to doing that kind of thing, but it's a great thing to reflect on at the end of the day. And it only takes like five minutes and you'll start yeah. to see patterns. So what are those four levels to start thinking about? You want to go this? there. I, okay. Yeah. I mean, I know that you, you kind of, you have, you've got that graphic of the, of the three discoveries and then the second one has got all these four other parts level. below it, but you know, yeah, let's, let's get serious about how we might bring this to life. I love it. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. And it doesn't surprise me on your podcast that we would do that. So the first thing is that your true self is in there and that's the true self level. And so I've been using this word, this term the entire time we've been speaking. And I think it's easy to do with you, but for others, you know, they don't necessarily connect with what that is. Like, what is he talking about this true self? So, you know, we did take some time to define what that meant in our own words, but it's certainly shaped by thousands of years of wisdom. And, and so I'll just read part of it. We have three paragraphs, but I think the first paragraph will encapsulate what we would be looking for here. Here. And so your true self is the real you. It's the most authentic version of who you are. And it's unshaped by societal expectations, professional roles, or social masks. It's the core identity that remains constant beneath the various hats that you wear in different areas of your life. And it's typically buried behind your ego your personality, and the suit of armor that you've developed over your lifetime, oftentimes due to some type of pain, trauma, or conditioning, or imprints, 
things of that nature. So freeing your true self, when you do that, it allows you to be authentic, free-spirited, liberated, unconstrained, unbounded, unapologetic. And truly to live your fullest potential, you have to be in that place. But as entrepreneurs, we're constrained by the what we believe to be true about what we have to do and how we need to show up in business. I had a conversation with somebody recently, and uh, he's part of one of our groups. And he said, um, in three years, I'll be ready to do that once we exit. <laughs> and I, I said to him, so first things first, you're assuming you'll be here in three years. Okay. I, that's a real question. You know, that's a real thing sure. to think about, you know. And secondly, you know, the next three years, you're going to be a chameleon and not let yourself free. And I mm. feel pain for you in that mm. regard. You know, that's a painful life. So, um, so we, this is the first premise we throw out to people is that your true self is in there. So you have to believe that. And if you right. do, we bring you down a level to the pure energy level. And this is that your pure energy. And, and, and just what we write, and we, David Hawkins, you reference is, is a great reference point for this is, you know, we're all pure energy, you know, we're made up of energy. And so it's our ability to vibrate high or vibrate low and, and be aware of where we are on this, on, on Hawkins map of consciousness that you have and you mm -hmm. so astutely look at. So regularly, I compliment you for that because I'm sure you notice I'm at 350, which is the average, by the way. I learned that in writing the book. I can't remember the word associated with it, but um, it, 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 was, it was like acceptance, I think. And you got it right there. Yeah, yeah I thought you might. Right here. Uh, so 350 is acceptance. Yeah. Yeah. So it's acceptance. So like we're generally like average is around 350 acceptance. And I think enlightenment's like 750 to 1000 or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, if generally speaking, we're around acceptance, which I would even challenge the driven entrepreneur, the conscious. That's a good day for a lot of people. 350 is a good <laughs> day right. for a lot of people. That's a good yeah. day. Exactly. So you're vibrating low quite frequently. And so here is your, your opportunity to tap into where am I vibrating today and can I raise my vibration? And there's different ways that you can do that. And one of the ways, as I segue, is to recognize that you have blocked energy. And so the, the, the fourth level down is the blocked energy level. And that's where we say you can remove this blocked energy. You can do that. There are ways of doing that. And we have a host of ways. You know, mm -hmm. it could be anything from, you know, just as we talked about earlier, sitting in a meditation practice and being aware of what's going on and, and just letting go. You know, something as simple as that. You can, you know, go on a bigger journey and do something that's very widely accepted nowadays, like therapy. You know, you can just go and talk to somebody about stuff that's going on, you know, things from your past. Not, none of this is new information, but sometimes we forget that this is how we un begin to unblock our energy and raise our vibration and, and ultimately move ourselves closer to being confident. It's about saying, like, I'm actually okay being my true self because <laughs> mm -hmm, right. I'm taking off the armor, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Gito came up with a great example when we were writing the book and I love it because I'm, a, I run and, you know, he said, when you start to, when, when we're running through life, imagine you're running with this suit of armor on and how hard that is. And as it starts to come off, now you're just in a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and, and running shoes and how light you must feel. Mm. And, and, you know, I could really relate to that as a runner when you have a lot of gear on a lot of stuff. And it's so different than when you're just in shorts and a t-shirt and we can make our way through lives so much lighter when we are truly okay with being our true selves. And that's the awareness level. That's where we bring awareness um, to the types of decisions that we're making. Are they love-based decisions or are they fear-based decisions? You know, are they abundance or scarcity? And so when that's our process that I guess, you know, Gino is so famous for is kind of coming up with a way of framing it and how we can take ourselves through it in a normal, busy day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. 
So th- so those are the sequences to dis- to determine and how am I making the decision? Is it love or fear? And then yeah. and then tools for kind of peeling back the onion, so to speak, to exactly. to get to that true essence of energy or or, or the true self. Uh, and then so let's pivot then to the third discovery. The third discovery is it's possible to be driven and to have peace. Yeah. So, you know, I always, you know, I, I talk to many people, many like you, many entrepreneurs and they're stressed out, they're anxious, all the things I could go on and on and on mental health, yada, yada, all this kind of stuff. And what do they want? They just want a feeling of peace. They want some ease in their life. They're searching everywhere for it. Where, when, you and I, I think, no, not that we're great at practicing, at least I'm not. It's right in front of you. It's right inside of you. <laughs> okay. But one of the things yeah. that entrepreneurs fear is that driven nature that they have in that in some way, they think that if they let go of that edge for peace, they won't be as successful as they hoped. And what we're saying is, you're not going to have to let go of the driven nature. You're actually going to use it better. <laughs> it's going to be a yeah. more focused energy and you're going to be more successful. And, and you, and the success will just be, it won't even be some badge of honor. It'll just be what it is because you will be making your way through life peacefully. And yes, you'll have some measure of outside success and that'll be nice and I'm sure it'll feel good and you'll have all the things that come along with that and all that kind of stuff. But you'll know that that isn't what defines you at all. That won't even matter. And that's a really special place to be because you you know, Alex, and all too often, entrepreneurs do what they think is make it to the top of the mountain and ring the bell and they have all the things and all the trips and accolades and so on and so forth. And they're standing up there going, why am I still anxious? Why, do I, why don't I feel peace? Mm-hmm. It's because none of that actually mattered. And, it, <laughs> and there's no mountain, by the way. There's no mountain to climb. <laughs> Stop climbing the mountain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there's no mountain, guys. <laughs> Well, the, I mean, the way the way that I think about this is is I've I've phrased it before as uh, this inner work is a precondition for the success you're looking for. Yeah, it's not optional. It's not something you do later. So, to that example you just gave of someone saying, "Once I sell the company, then I'll be ready to do all this." No, it's, you got to flip it around. You you do this stuff now so that you have benefits later. And if you really want to have true fulfillment and satisfaction and success, you got to be willing to do this work. Yeah, you, you are so spot on, so spot on. And so from these three discoveries, so just to recap, the, the three discoveries are, I am driven, decisions are made from love or fear, and it is possible to, ha- to be driven and to have peace. So this is a great framing. From that, we get into the 10 disciplines. Now, uh, I don't want to go through each one because there's a, there's a lot of stuff in there, but what are the ones that you find to be the best place to start? Like yeah. what what's the the obvious launch point once I'm on board with these three discoveries? How do I get started? So before I answered that question, I want to mention that I snuck a couple in while we were talking. We talked about take time off, which is one of the disciplines. We yep. talked about putting everything in one place. So carry around mm-hmm. one place in your life where you keep all your notes and commitments and all that kind of thing. So there's two practical. T- well, putting everything in one place is pretty practical. That's a way to to k- k- uh, create boundaries in your life. So you have uh, some space in your mind. Taking time off, I don't know for everyone that they feel practical, but I like to think it is. But the great launching point really is tenure thinking. And this is where we encourage people to shift their mindset from short-term thinking to thinking in 10-year timeframes. But it's not goal setting. You know, we really want people to create a 10-year thinking vision in their mind and and hopefully even write it down. One sentence, a, a set of bullet points or a vivid story of what your life looks like in the future. There's no guarantee that that's actually going to happen. But what we want to do in this exercise is bring you back to the present moment. Because in the present moment is where you have the opportunity to align what you're doing in your life with what you believe your future will be. And so Mm -hmm. really, that's what it's about. So I always like to use the um, simple example is if you have an important relationship with someone in your life and you want that to be really um, 
vibrant and loving and non-judgmental 10 years from now. What you do today makes a difference. What you do in this moment makes a difference. So mm -hmm. bring awareness to that, to this present moment and pause as I'm sure you know that famous saying between stimulus and response and watch how you react and watch how you bring your energy to that particular uh, situation. So that's the best launching point. It's sort of the foundation to the foundation. Uh, when you say the the power of, of thinking in, in this 10 year increment, it, it kind of makes me think this is who I'm becoming. It's like, who am I becoming? Who, you know, who, who's the me that's going to be existing in 10 years. And I, and I had the opportunity to craft that person. Yeah. In a sense you do, or by it, it can be all kinds of things. It could, there could be outside successors that are really important to you. Again, there's no guarantee any of these things are happening. We encourage you to just let it flow. If it's a more you know, I like the deeper, more introspective stuff. So, you know, my, I kind of think in those terms, but relationships are certainly part of it. I think about my kids. I have a 29 year old and a 25 year old. How do I want to show up for them 10 years from now? And now how am I showing up at this moment that aligns with that? And so mm. those are the kinds of things that we encourage people to really think about and craft this over a period of time and then consistently making updates to it. It's like, you know, uh, it's a live document, so to speak. And we just always want you to reassess. Sometimes what seems like what you see in the future today, you find out a year later, you don't really understand why that was important then. And we want you to change that immediately and get more alignment because it tells me you're getting closer to your true self just by bringing awareness to what you thought was important a year ago and now what you think is important today. So keep crafting it and working on it. You know, we encourage people to read it. it takes, you know, three minutes once a week. Just keep mm. reading it, you know, because new things come up, come arise depending on what's happening in your life. Got it. Yep. So that's the best place to start is frame that, is that 10 year plan. Absolutely. Great. Well, if I, mean, if I if I do that and I do the other things that you recommend, like keep everything in one place, take time off, set boundaries. Another one that always uh, uh, kind of struck me from from the talk that you gave a couple of years ago was don't do twenty five dollar an hour work because <laughs> as entrepreneurs we get stuck with like I'm doing everything. You're you know the proverbial coffee maker, proverbial taking out the trash, proverbial uh, you know office manager, logistics, you name it. And we find ourselves just like pulled in so many directions, but you're saying there are other people who are better trained, better qualified, better able to do these things, uh, value your time in a way that allows you to focus what you're great at, your zone of genius, so to speak, and have someone else do the things that you're no good at or that you could outsource easily. You got it. And the thing is that everyone kind of already knows that, but they, as we mentioned earlier, we're controllers. Nobody can do it. It's too hard to train them, uh, you know, et cetera. I can't afford it right now. All these reasons. Here's what I ask people to do. I ask them to start monitoring how many hours they work per week. And then I ask you to take your annual compensation and divide it by those number of hours. I hope you're a six figure person or you're moving in that direction or then some, because if you're an entrepreneur, you've got to be making, you got to get yourself, you didn't create a job for yourself. You make a decent living. It's where you've been taking great risk. So look at your hourly rate and then look mm -hmm. at the things you're doing every day and then start asking yourself, why am I doing this? This is $40 an hour work. I shouldn't be doing $40 an hour work. I'm a $300 an hour person. If I look at, you know, my hours divided by my compensation. Mm -hmm. And what would happen if I did more $300, $500 an hour work? How would I, how would that investment pay off within 12 months? Trust yourself because you were made to be doing that higher level work. That's why you're an entrepreneur. You, you, that these are the things, this is the magic of you in that small category that right. we mentioned, that 10%, but you're not letting the magic out because you're stuck doing administrative work for some reason and you can't get yourself to stop. And we also encourage people to look at this in their personal life. Like, why are you doing things in your household or whatever? Which if you like doing them, keep doing them. I'm all for that. But if they drain your energy, stop. Pay yeah. somebody to do it and use the time to re-energize yourself. 
You know, it's worth it. It will pay off multiple times for you. So if you need the ROI, do the math. Yeah, no, quite. I, I really like that one. So uh, this is such a valuable guide. I, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the book Shine, How Looking Inward is the Key to Unlocking True Entrepreneurial Freedom. I've got my uh, advanced copy here because you were very gracious to send me one. When does the book come out and what are you guys doing to help get the word out? So it comes out on March 26th of uh, obviously this year, 2024. And what are we doing to get the word out? I think you're going to like this answer based on everything that I've shared with you. As little as possible. <laughs> <laughs> we are following our true selves and we keep asking ourselves when we are presented with these ideas like, you know, okay, should we have a launch party? And we look at ourselves and we say, are we launch party people? We say no. So we're not doing that. Uh, you know, we need to be doing more of this and more go on social media and all these. And we just are looking at the things that are being presented to us and saying, is this in alignment with our true self? And a lot of it isn't. And the very, the very few that is, that's what we're putting our focus on. And so, you know, wonderful people like you, I'm more than happy to want to speak with because you get us you're in alignment, you're open, you teach this stuff, quite frankly, you're at the forefront of it. We could have gone down a lot of other paths on some deeper stuff, which would have, maybe that's for another day. But um, this to me is a dream come true. And it helps me know that I'm doing the right thing when I'm talking to somebody like you. Fantastic. Well, uh, Rob, I want to say that uh, I love the book. Uh, I'm a huge fan of your work. Thank you for being part of our Conscious Entrepreneur community. Thanks for your leadership here. Uh, and thanks for helping us to articulate why this matters. This is so important for entrepreneurs. It should not be overlooked. Uh, we need to be doing this type of work to get and create the lives that we say we want. And so I think you're, you are a great example of that. Like, so me witnessing you, you are someone who walks the walk here. And uh, I really looking forward, I really look forward to this message getting out more broadly. Thank you, Alex. I really uh, appreciate you having me on and your support and your thoughtfulness and your preparation. And as I've said numerous times, and I do mean this from my heart, thank you for what you do with the Conscious Entrepreneur Summit. It is amazing. And I've really enjoyed watching the community grow. And so please know, any way I can ever support you, I'm always here for it. Awesome. Thank you so much, Rob Dubay. Thanks for joining the Conscious thank Entrepreneur you, Podcast. Appreciate you.